So what is it? What is it really that they're opposing the Donald, uh, that, that is making them so anti-Trump? And I'll tell you, I'm convinced that what it is is that that whole military-industrial complex establishment, the same people who always get together and sign whatever fucking bill is, is put in front of them, he wasn't in that club. And they weren't sure whether he was going to go along with it or not. And you got this guy out on the campaign who's saying things like, we, uh, we were lied into the war in Iraq, we shouldn't have fought any of these wars, we're wasting trillions and trillions of dollars and killing a whole bunch of people, wouldn't it be great if we could just work with Russia so we don't end up going to war with Russia, which, by the way, was Hillary Clinton and Marco Rubio's official position. They both supported a no-fly zone in Syria. Now, no-fly zone where Russian planes are flying. So basically saying that we're going to start shooting down Russian planes. This is on the record, and it's not just people like me. Like, people in our military were saying, we can't have a no-fly zone because that means we're at war with Russia. All right? And this is what they were supporting. And Donald Trump said, well, maybe we could just work with Russia, not fight another war in Syria, not continue slaughtering people in the Middle East, and save a whole bunch of money. Wouldn't that be better? Saving money and not fighting a war? And, and, and I think this is what it was all about, man. They've got a fucking plan. I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's something close to what Wesley Clark uh, General Wesley Clark laid out where we're going oh, to keep toppling these regimes, but this is what is going on. They've got a plan, and he wasn't with the plan, and they were, they were worried that he was going to undermine the system. Now, that doesn't mean he's doing a great job of it since he's been in there, but they don't consider him on their team. And also, you know, presidents can uh, declassify shit. And who knows what other type of shady shit is going on uh, under the carpet. So they were, they were against Trump from the very beginning. And this is where I was leading into what my take on this that I, I, I haven't heard other people talk about. And I'm not, you know, again, I'm speculating when I say this. But what this memo is all about is the surveillance of Carter Page. Okay? Now, Carter Page was a foreign policy advisor uh, to Donald Trump's campaign. Uh, Carter Page is an interesting guy. Uh, I don't know a ton about him. I, I've got his Wikipedia pulled up here in front of me. But uh, Carter Page was in the Navy. Uh, after he left the Navy, he completed a fellowship at the Council on Foreign Relations. Okay? Um, he, uh, in 2000, he began work as an investment banker with Merrill Lynch in the firm's London office and was a vice president in the company's Moscow office. Uh, he later served as the COO for Merrill Lynch's Energy and Power Department in New York. And then he, uh, it, after leaving Merrill Lynch in 2008, he founded his own investment fund, his own investment fund, excuse me, Global Energy Capital. Um, and, and that's what he's been doing since. So, very successful guy who's been in very connected in a very connected world okay he's kind of uh, not that he's the guy but he was kind of in this world of um of of finance and you know the council on foreign relations things like that he, he was familiar with this world and what they've been calling him over and over again is a uh, pro-putin that he that he was pro-putin and I got to tell you, there's something about that that is a bit of a dog whistle to me. And from the uh, kind of inception of the military-industrial complex as we know it, so from, you know, it's, it's the early stages are kind of created in World War I. The, what we really know of it now is created in World War II. And then after World War II is when the military-industrial complex is really in charge. And... Eisenhower, right? So, I mean, it, it goes back before uh, uh, Eisenhower, really. I mean, even um, Henry Wallace, who was uh, vice president under FDR, uh, he was a guy who, after World War II, and even during World War II, I think, really pushed for having peace with the Soviet Union after the war. 
and that we, we shouldn't, you know what I mean, like provoke people. We should find a way to have a peaceful uh, kind of like, um, like, you know, we should have an economic contest with them, but it, it should be peaceful. They have a right to do things their way. We, we can do them our way. And he was, com he was completely trashed in the media as being pro-communist. As being, and now I don't know, maybe he was, I don't know for sure, but this is this was the angle. It's like as soon as you, this, this is how the military industrial complex started getting you. As soon as you advocated peace, oh, you know, maybe we shouldn't have this big arms race. Maybe all the, uh, the companies attached to the military industrial complex shouldn't be just making billion dollars, uh, billions and billions of dollars hands over fist so that we can maybe slaughter human beings with these weapons that we're buying. Maybe we should move in a different way and have detente with Russia. And right away, you're a pro-Stalinist, you're, you're pro-Russia. Okay, this was the thing. In, in Eisenhower's campaign, everybody who, uh, who would argue against, um, uh, against this kind of like crazy militarism was instantly labeled a communist sympathizer, pro-Soviet, you're weak. You're in bed with the Russians, all this stuff, okay? And then now Eisenhower did everything he could to build up the Cold War. He was an absolute nightmare in that regard. However, in his farewell address, he did warn the country. He did warn us. He said that we've basically, he was like, we have, he coined the term, the military industrial complex. And he said, we've created uh, this, this armament industry that has changed America. I believe he actually said it's changed it not only economically, but spiritually. And, and he said, we have to guard against uh, power sought or unsought by the military-industrial complex. He, this was his final warning to the country, okay? And then uh, you have Kennedy come in, and every time Kennedy did anything that wasn't uh, aggressive, pushing toward aggressive war with the Soviet Union, I mean, whether it was the Bay of Pigs or the Cuban Missile Crisis or any of this stuff— it was always like, oh, look at him. Look at this. Uh, he's weak on communism. You're just pro-Russian. Okay? So anytime anyone moves in an anti-war direction, this is what they, they would call you. Even Murray Rothbard was, was called uh, by neocons a communist sympathizer. Imagine that. Murray freaking Rothbard. The most uncommunist human being who's ever walked the face of the earth. Was, was called a communist sympathizer because he didn't want to go to war. Now, ironically, all these people who, you know, pride themselves on being anti-communists, we're the ones who are really going to go out there and fight the communists. They end up supporting the most socialized aspect of our, uh, of our uh, country, which is the military. And they go on to basically support everything that takes us closer and closer to communism from within. Now, Kennedy, okay, his at one point Kennedy's brother, uh, Bobby Kennedy, went and met with uh, Nikita Khrushchev, and this is reported that he basically. So this is during the Cuban Missile Crisis, and he was the, the deal that was ultimately struck was that uh, that the Russians would remove the nuclear warheads that they had in Cuba if we would remove. The nuclear, uh, uh, the nuclear weapons that we had in, uh, I believe it was uh, Turkey. Okay, so like they had nuclear weapons that could hit us, and we. But the deal was okay that this wasn't part of the deal officially because this didn't get reported to America. It was basically what what Bobby Kennedy was able to work out with Khrushchev was that you remove the nukes from uh, from Cuba, and you have our off the record word that within six months. We're going to move our nukes away from there. And this is, has been reported. I don't know if this can be substantiated. But it was said that, that Bobby Kennedy said to him that if he came out and just made that officially part of the deal, uh, JFK was worried that he'd be overthrown by the military. Like you couldn't be seen as being friends with the Russians. Even if being friends with the Russians was just saying like, hey, let's not all destroy each other. Let's not have... 200 million dead in a nuclear war, which we came very close to having. But don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to paint Kennedy out to be any type of hero. Kennedy was, was very bad on a lot of other issues, and he got us involved in ultimately what became the Vietnam War. And um, although it did seem like every time he would question drawing down that war, or he would think about finding peace with the Soviet Union, they would get harder and harder on him. And then ultimately, you know, he had a bad trip to Dallas. So when I hear all these accusations 
against this guy Carter Page as being pro-Putin. And he's a, a foreign policy advisor to Donald Trump. It just makes me wonder. It makes me speculate a little bit. Is he actually pro-Putin? Or is he maybe not fucking insane? Maybe he just doesn't want to have a war with a nuclear-armed country. And this is not like, again, not some crazy out there thing. This is what Hillary Clinton was advocating. This is what she was running on. And we have our own military members who have testified in front of Congress and been like, yes, this means war with Russia. If we have a no-fly zone, this means war with Russia. And again, just to point out, it's not just Hillary Clinton. This is also what Marco Rubio supported. I'm sure Jeb Bush would have also supported it. I'm sure Lindsey Graham would have also supported it. You know, all these people who ran on, on the Republican ticket to, uh, or ran uh, uh, for president on, on the Republican Party and couldn't get any support. Couldn't get any support. Now, these are, all these people are right there with Hillary Clinton. 